Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. For about five years now, I've used this HP Z620 workstation, and it's been pretty sufficient for those five years. Eight cores, 16 threads at up to 3.8 gigahertz, and 32 gigabytes of ECC registered DDR3. But lately, it's been struggling to keep up with the increasing demand of my CAD animation and video editing projects. So that is why I have bought a new HP Z840 workstation. And uh, it has so many cores that Windows can't even display graphs for them in Task Manager. I timed that really well, but uh, yeah, it doesn't even show graphs for all the cores because it has 72 threads. So let's dive a little deeper into the hardware of this machine because, uh, yeah, it's really awesome and I've never covered anything this powerful on this channel before. Also, if you see a few extra ads on this video, it's because I spent a good deal of money on this workstation. So I, I try not to put too many ads in my videos, but um, I do want to make a little money back. So. Thank you for understanding. Before I even open up the workstation and show you the glorious insides, I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of Task Manager. So up here we can see we have a Xeon E52697 V4, 2.3 gigahertz up to, I think it's 3.6 max single core. Uh, as you can see, two sockets, 36 cores, 72 logical processors. So that's because this is two 18 core 36 thread CPUs working together. And look at how much L3 cache we have. 90 megabytes of L3. And these CPUs are from like 2014. That rivals the new like Ryzen with 3DV cache CPUs. L2 cache of 9 megabytes and L1 of 2.2, which that is a lot. They don't clock super high under all core load, only to, well, apparently 0, 0.00 gigahertz as it just changed to, but 2.69, 2690 megahertz. That's pretty decent for a CPU with so many cores because higher core count CPUs usually clock a good deal lower. Then let's look at our RAM. I've upgraded from DDR3 to DDR4, and that was one of the major things with this workstation. I'm going from 1333 megahertz to 2133, and it's uh, a lot faster. I also have 64 gigabytes, which I do not really need in my workstation. But uh, as you can see, I am using about 14 gigs right now. And then I have a crap ton of hard drives that I will be getting into later. And I also have an NVMe, another NVMe that I'm booting from, which is pretty nice. And I'm using my good old GTX 980. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But yeah, let's get into the actual hardware of this machine as it's quite fascinating. Let me just show you the front first as it does have a unique arrangement of like the front. Usually you have your 5.25 bays up here. By the way, there is a handle up there at the very top, but usually your 5.25 bays are here and this is all vent. But there is a, there is a reason that 840 is laid out like this and you'll see that once we get inside. But of course up here it says Z840. Here, this is a standard feature on the machine. It has a 3.5 inch, or sorry, a slimline optical drive. And uh, this machine didn't come with an optical drive. I put it in myself, but that was an option you could configure straight from HP. This is a separate bay that's like designed just for the optical drive. Then here are your two 5.25. I am using this bay that holds an external 3.5 inch drive as well as two internal 2.5 inch drives. I have a one terabyte WD blue hard drive and one terabyte SSD in there. The blue hard drive is just for storing videos that I've downloaded. 
Uh, my actually good fast hard drives are down here, and I'll talk about that later. And this is my hot swap SATA caddy, and now SAS caddy, because this thing has an SAS controller. Uh, again, I'll talk about that later, but hot swap SATA and SAS caddy for my drive testing videos, as I love doing those. Then here we have mic, headphone mic combo, four USB 3 ports, two additional USB 3 ports, and a USB 2 port. So, uh, yeah, seven front USB ports is pretty much all I could ever need. I only ever used one or two on the Z620. But down here, of course, HP logo to uh, tell you how, uh, who to get mad at when something goes wrong. And our lovely little Xeon sticker. Now, because these are Xeon E5 V4, the sticker design is a little different than the E5 V1 that I had in the Z620. But that's enough talking about it. Let me shut it off and take off the side panel so you can really experience this machine. So with our side panel off, we can start seeing the insides. There is one thing I want to discuss with the side panel really quickly, and that is, let me set it down and zoom in. There we go. Hopefully you can somewhat read that, but the inside of the side panel offers some really great information for just general servicing. You get a system diagram with parts labeled like the PCIe slots, CPU sockets, what SATA ports are compatible with what standards such as SAS um, or just SATA. Then we have memory load order, which is another important thing, especially in workstations with many memory slots like the 16 this one has. Okay, I have removed it from my desk area and set it on the floor because it's just too big. Before I take a look at the cards I've installed, I think I'm gonna just show you general I.O. area on the back. I'm sorry, this, this thing is like 40 pounds. So um, we have serial. PS2 keyboard and mouse, audio in and out for the onboard, two USB 2.0 ports, four USB 3.0 ports, and two Ethernet ports, one of them AMT compatible. Your uh, power plug is up here, and you've got two nice fans back here, and a set of keys for locking and unlocking the side panel, which is actually nice. I use that because I don't want anyone stealing my uh, hardware. It's a lot easier to steal, like, one drive or, like, a GPU than the entire workstation. And uh, that is a thing that I am glad, you know, that HP provides that security. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and get this off. Now, this is an airflow baffle for your PCIe cards. Ooh, I feel the heat radiating from it. I just shut this thing off. But, um... It just kind of guides air over your cards and then out the back. And it actually does regulate the temperatures quite nicely. Now here's my GPU. It's my old GTX 980 Super Cloft from EVGA. This is not the newest card out there. It is approaching 10 years old. And I'd say it's the biggest bottleneck in the system. I've been planning to replace it with a uh, Quadro RTX series card or the... Uh, you know, RTX A4500, because those aren't too expensive used. But it's okay in terms of graphical power for me, because I don't do, like, super GPU-heavy applications. It's mainly CPU-bound. VRAM is the big issue. This only has 4 gigabytes of VRAM. And that runs out really fast when you're dealing with a lot of, like, super high-res textures. And the next card I think I'm going to have to fully take out so that I can show to you, because it's very small. This is my boot drive. This is the HP Z Turbo Drive G2. This is the 256 gigabyte flavor. Now, this is in a PCIe by 3 uh, or sorry, PCIe by 4 3.0 slot, and this is a very fast drive. This is, 
You know, any old NVMe drive will work in this machine, but I wanted the HP specific one because I knew it would be built well and it has that nice heat sink. But this drive gets about four gigabytes per second and it's uh, nice and fast. There's a Samsung, I believe SM961 under there. Now here is my other NVMe. This is the one I use for raw footage and uh, that sort of thing. Just things I need to access quickly. This is just a cheap NVMe card with a 128 gigabyte SU something. It's an A-Data drive. It's 128 gigabytes, not quite as fast as the Samsung one. And then down here is my sound card. It's a Sound Blaster Z. And uh, I, I just prefer that to onboard audio. Now here is, actually no, I'm not gonna do CPU yet because that's the super interesting part. I'm gonna save that for the end. I'm gonna do drives. Now this is, oh, this is my like output drive. So video editor, Cinema 4D, files that come out of programs. Things that get rendered go to this drive. This is a SAS drive that I stole from my server. I reviewed it on the channel a little while back. It's a 15,000 RPM SAS Ultra Star. Then these two drives are identical um, HGST Ultra Star 7,000 RPM, 7,200 RPM, two terabyte. They are HP OEM from my old Z620 workstation and I just moved them over. I'm running these in RAID 0, so I have a very fast um, 4 terabyte volume. And then I have a 4 terabyte HGSD UltraStar backup drive. And that is it for my hard drives. Yes, GPU airflow is pulled through the hard drives, but it's really not that bad. The temperatures are okay. Then power supply. This is no regular ATX power supply. This thing is Massive. It looks like a spaceship part. This is 1,125 watts delivered through three 24-pin connectors. And it just nicely slides in there. You know your PSU is high-end when it has two fans. And then here's the super cool part. Prepare for the coolest riser you will ever see. Boom! This is the CPU cooler. One, two, three, four, five, six fans. Now these, these squirrel cage or blower style fans are for cooling the memory, the RAM right here. And that one is also for cooling the RAM. There just wasn't space for a blower fan there. Those fans are for cooling the RAM and the VRM, the power delivery of the motherboard. These, these bigger fans go of course, onto the CPUs in order to cool them. And um, it's overall very well designed. Some poor engineer spent like 200 hours designing this, I bet. But overall, the whole feel of this machine is just very professional. You can tell it was built to a very high standard. Now let's look at the actual CPU like area itself. Here we have these beefy heat sinks on our VRM. First of all, this is the power delivery to these CPUs and that is needed since each of these chips is 145 watts. Now these heat sinks may look small for a 145 watt chip and that may indeed be true, but the airflow this thing produces is so fantastic that this workstation can be near silent and cool these acceptably under a very high load, and by acceptably, we mean 80 Celsius on this one and 60 Celsius on this one. Of course, this CPU is going to get a little hotter because the air from this CPU is blowing across it. Here we have our DDR4 slots, and we have 16 of them. Eight of them are filled because this configuration can support eight channel memory. The IMC integrated memory controller in each of these CPUs can run four channels. And with, with two CPUs, that means I can get eight channels of memory. That is a 512-bit memory bus, which is unheard of in like any consumer-grade system. So this is just 
fantastic the speed that I get from this RAM. A RAM disk writes at almost 8 gigabytes per second and reads at around 7 gigabytes per second. It is truly incredible how fast this configuration is. Now, to the overall motherboard, I will say uh, it is not ATX. You might be able to see this is not ATX. It is ATX would only be like this big. This board is longer in this way and it's taller in this way because it needs to fit these two CPUs but it also needs to fit the memory slots like this and the, all the PCIe slots. And again, we can have a lot of PCIe slots, three 16x slots plus a smattering of other slots to be exact, all running at 3.0 speeds because each of these CPUs can already run a ridiculous number of PCIe lanes on their own, but you put them together on the same board and you get twice the bandwidth. So that is what is so fantastic about this workstation. It can run ridiculously powerful hardware. And up here is, of course, my, um, here's the SATA cable from it. I can't pull the actual drive out, but that is the WD Blue that I use for just downloaded videos, and that is my SSD, and I use that for some programs, although I've started to put more on the NVMe because it's nice and fast. That is going to wrap it up for the actual hardware bit of the workstation. Next, I'm going to demonstrate this thing's power with an unconventional Cinebench run. This is the project file from Cinebench R20 and R23. Now, a while ago, some of you may know, I got my hands on the project files for a bunch of old Cinebench versions, and I was able to pull the one from R20 slash R23, and here it is. Now, I don't want to get too in-depth into the actual scene because then I will literally talk for minutes about just the art itself because it's truly fascinating. But I just want something that will put a lot of load on the CPU and just running Cinebench is not good enough for me. So let's do a render of just this pineapple and these pins. If you were alive in 2012, you know what I am getting at here. And reminder, this is the same engine as Cinebench. Look how fast that renders. Look how fast these 72 cores draw pretty lines. Sorry, one of my hard drives is just making some noise. Oh yeah, by the way, that 15K drive is so loud. Like, I know server drives are loud, but that one is just extra turbo loud. I mean, look how fast this is. Those 72 threads really do uh, a fantastic job. Let me... Here, I'll, I'll do this uh, candle here, because it has transparency on it. And uh, by the way, I'm not speeding this up at all. This is real time. If you know anything about Cinema 4D, then you know this is an absolutely fantastic result. But anyway, I think I've sufficiently nerded out of, you know, how powerful this workstation is. That is gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you everyone for watching, and see you next time.